Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Our guest today is Tracy Soucy, an amazing woman who is an affiliate leader for Helping Parents Heal online group. She's also a board member for the Soul Phone Foundation. Today, we'll be hearing her journey from loss to learning to belief to sharing and making a profound difference in the lives of so many others. Tracy Soucy, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Oh, thank you, Sandra. I chills with that introduction. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. So welcome. And I'm really glad that we're able to do this today. This is super. And thank you so much for having us. You have a no idea how much you have helped our parents um, along our journey. So many people uh, listen to your radio, follow you. You are such an inspiration. I think you just have no idea how much you've helped so many parents. Thank you so much for that. And as I said in a message to you last night, it takes one to know one. Oh, and we, that's so sweet. We don't know who's listening, and we don't know the loss people have had. And I think if we can get our own egos and our own inner chatter of maybe not being good enough or smart enough or who wants to listen to me, all that kind of stuff out of the way, and we stand in service and let my words make a difference for another today. I think that's like a pretty profound intention. It's very profound. And the big thing about parents is a lot of time is they want to do their grieving and their journey, especially in the beginning alone and having a resource like listening to you, they can do it in the privacy. They can get those aha moments you know, they can do it on their time frame and it can be such a blessing to so many people. Yes. And you are a parent. I am not. And for our listener, first of all, I want to welcome you to the show. And even if you're not a parent, um, I know grief is something that touches everyone. And so there's obviously a great amount of good things in this for parents, but also if you've had a loss or you experienced grief of any kind, you know, really set the intention, tune your ear that there's something really magnificent in the next hour with Tracy and Sandra, something magnificent mm-hmm. for you. So that's my request. So Tracy, let's hear a little bit about your story. You're, uh, where are you this morning talking to me? I am in Colorado. Very nice. I'm at my mom's house in Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, have you always lived there? Is that where you're? No, from? I am uh, born and raised in Florida via Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, I've been in Colorado for a few years. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So a little bit about your background and your story of how you got involved with helping parents heal. Because I know okay. it's a bittersweet one. Yes. It is. Um, I've been on this journey for 22 months. Um, My son, Eamon, and um, I love to speak his name. I love to hear his name. uh, Transitioned in his sleep uh, 22 months ago. Um, Eamon had a very complicated form of sleep apnea. Um, I remember he was diagnosed in college, and I remember the doctor calling me saying, if we didn't get this under control, he, they use the word die, would die very young. And we thought we had it under control, but um, he um, transitioned in his sleep. Uh, He was 29 years old, almost 30. Um, And when this happened, of course, it shook me to my core. And I was fortunate enough, um, my, my dad, studied Edgar Casey in the seventies. And we always, we thought he was kind of, um, woo woo and out there. Mm -hmm. Um, I believed it a little bit. My sister Dawn has been studying Abraham Hicks for about 10 years. And I started studying her maybe about a year before Eamon's transition. And, um, so when this happened, I just threw myself into studying the afterlife. Um, I read, got my hands on everything. I know I've told you, I, I've listened to every one of yours. You're so uplifting and positive. Thank but you. I, the first book I read was Soul Proof by Dr. Mark Pitstick. I believe he's 
you you obviously know who he is and you've spoken to him. Yes, he's great. And he did a podcast and I was about three months in and um, he's so kind. And he said to me, you know, there's this group helping parents heal. You know, someday I feel you might want to be a leader. And, you know, I still was in that just grief and I couldn't see my way out of anything. And like everyone, um, I have three children, but Eamon and I spoke, talked, text every day. You know, he was almost 30 and I did so much for him. We were so close. I just thought I couldn't make it another day. Every day I thought that. So when I was researching Mark, I came across the website Eternia. Um, of course, I know you've heard of it. And I found Suzanne Giesman. Um, and I started looking up her because of her. I thought, boy, if somebody was in the military and now she's a medium, you know, my skeptical mind, I thought she has to be the real deal. Yeah, she was a, wasn't she a Navy commander? Uh, aide de camp. And she was uh, the only one of the only uh, she was the only flight that flew over 9-11. Wow. And she went on this path because her stepdaughter, Susan, was struck by lightning uh, and transitioned six months pregnant. Yes. And so she started her journey to becoming a medium because of that. So I found she was giving a, a mediumship course in New Mexico. And I signed up for the course, even though it was in mediumship, I thought, if my son is still living and alive, he's going to come through Suzanne. I just knew it. I said it. I prayed for it. Mm -hmm. um, I had to go to DC. My daughter broke her foot, got on the plane on the way back. I prayed and prayed and prayed. And I said, Amen, if you're still alive, you have to come through Suzanne. So I went to New Mexico. I attended her class. This was at about five months in. So I was still so raw, so in pain. I cried every day and um, I attended her class. Well, the first day she started the class, you know, she said, I don't give readings, you know, but I'm going to teach you how to connect with spirit. And, you know, of course, my shoulders dropped and I thought, oh, I thought I was going to hear from my son. I knew right. I wasn't. So I went through the first day and, you know, she gave us these wonderful tools and, you know, she channels Sanaya and I listened to it and um, I was telling a lady next to me that I get signs all the time from Amen of Feathers. But after the first day, I went back and I, I said, you know, I don't think I'm going to go back. I'm not going to hear from Amen. And at lunch, I stepped out of the car and there were two feathers laying on the ground. So I went back to class and told the lady next to me and, um, you know, my story. And she said, just hang in there. Just hang in there. So the next morning I got to class and sitting on my chair was a little card that said, um, I never find feathers. And this woman had found two feathers outside of her door for her hotel. So I decided that was a sign to stay. Yes. And Suzanne um, came that morning and I could tell she was tired and kind of distracted and she kept looking at me. You know, I was the only person in the room frowning. Everybody else was getting into this. <laughs> class and enjoying it and embracing it. And she said, I need to take a break. So she, unbeknownst to me, she went and meditated and she came back in the room and went to the back of the table. And I made a beeline to her and I said, um, it's the first time I spoke to her. I said, Suzanne, um, I'm thinking about leaving the class, but um, I just wanted to thank you you know, I'm just not really, you know, getting into this. And she stood there just staring at me with her mouth open and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And she said, of course you can leave. But she said, I need to do a reading for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there like a deer in the headlight. I didn't know what to do. And I just, I, she said, 
spirits called me to do a reading for you. Would you be open to it? And I said, of course. So we went to the front of the classroom. There were 50 people in the class and she asked permission from the class and asked if she could, it was okay to demonstrate a meaning. So of course everyone said yes. And um, she knew nothing about me. All she knew is that I just sat in the class frowning the whole time. <laughs> so then she told me that, or she told the class all night, um, her daughter, Susan, and my son, Eamon, she didn't know it was my son at the time. She said, they kept me awake and they said, I had to do a reading for you. So she sent her intention and she started the reading and she said, oh my gosh, you've lost a son and he's standing right next to you. Of course, of course I burst into tears. Yes. And I mean, I'm just sitting there like, how did this happen? How did I get on this journey? How did I make it here? How did she do this? And my prayers were answered. I prayed and prayed and prayed. I had to hear that Amen was alive. And um, to quote what Suzanne said was that Amen was a lot like her Susan. And he came there to kick my butt. And to tell me that I could do this. And if I got through the depths of my grief, that my journey was to help other parents. And I said to Suzanne, it's so early. I, I can't do this. There's no way I can do this. And she said, he said, it's early too. And I explained to her that it started with Mark Pitstick, went to Eternia, which led me to her. And that was my journey was to, you know, be there and for her. And she brought so many validations. On the way to New Mexico, we stopped at this chapel and I lit a candle for my son and a friend of my son, John Paul. And she said, Eamon saw you lighting candles, which how could he know? They like to bring in current things that yes. happen. Yeah. Yeah. He brought up, she brought up horses. His fiance is a horse trainer. Um, I had my little dog, baby girl. She, um, passed three months after Eamon. Oh. He brought up my dog. He brought up so many things that Suzanne, even if she researched me, she could not know. Right. And, um, so she gave me a reading. Um, she, felt how um, Eamon transitioned. Um, she felt, you know, his the, the medication the doctors prescribed to him affected his health. He passed out at work. Um, he came home and he just slipped away and fell asleep and slipped away. And everything was just dead on accurate. So, um Afterwards, she spoke to me and, um, you know, I kept saying to her, you know, Suzanne, this is so wonderful, but I'm still, you know, I, I can probably sleep tonight. Mm -hmm. And I said, how do I do this? And she said, I'm going to give you the name of another mother, Irene Vuvalidis. And she said, I want you to call her. And, you know, again, I'm thinking, oh, to reach out to somebody, you know. I encourage people to reach out, reach out, reach out, spread your story, help other people. So I connected with Irene. Um, Irene, to this day, she's actually the, the coordinator and head, the chairperson of the Helping Parents Heal Annual Conference. And um, since then, um, we, we have a group of eight moms that we text every single day. We we communicate with each other. We help each other. But anyhow, I left um, Suzanne's and Suzanne literally saved my life that day. I, I believe if she would not have brought my son through, I don't think I could have stayed on this earth plane. I, I, even though I have two beautiful daughters, I just, my depths of despair were just so strong. All I wanted to do was um, to be with him. Mm -hmm. So to fast forward, um, I was so thankful for Suzanne. 
I um, went and I bought her a pair of infinity earrings. And my son has tattooed on his ribs what we do in life echoes in eternity in Italian. And really? I used to, <laughs> yes, which is really, I w- and he got it in college. And I would say to him, Eamon, why did you pick that um, saying? And he said, I don't know, Mom. And I said, why did you get it in Italian? And he said, well, Mom, you're Italian. And I said, yes. And my son is half Arabic. And I said, um, I, you know, I thought you maybe you would get it in Arabic or English. And he said, no, I just felt like I wanted to get it in Italian. So I wrote out a card to Suzanne and I put um, the saying and I wrote it in Italian and I said, I am eternally grateful uh, for what you have done for me. And I sent her the card and the earrings. So Suzanne was off and, you know, she travels and um, she was in the group attorney up. And she said that she, one day she decided, should she stay with the attorney or not? It was taking a lot of her time. She spends a great deal of time helping parents and helping parents heal. Yes. And she said she put the sign out to the universe. Should I stay or should I not? She said, didn't think about it again. Hadn't been thinking about me that day in the mail. She receives my gift and she opens up the card and in Italian, I wrote Eternia like the group Eternia. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And she, believe it or not, was was an Italian major or a minor in college. So how I wrote it, I thought was how Eamon had it on his tattoo. And she immediately sends me an email and says, you wrote Eternia. Um, Is that how Eamon had it spelled? And I wrote back, yes, I think that's how he had it spelled. I had a picture of it on his side. And she said, there's my sign. There's my (laughs) sign. What are the odds that I would get that? So Suzanne, being the kind person she is, she sits down and she goes to write a thank you email to me. So she's sitting there and she's writing me this thank you note and she gets what Dr. Gary Schwartz calls a drop in. Here comes Eamon dropping in on Suzanne. She could feel him. She knew it was him. And he was giving her some signs of some things, you know, recent for me. And as she's ending it, she says, Eamon says, no gift goes unreturned. Thank you for relaying my messages to my mom. Um, tell her about the tooth fairy. So Suzanne says, tooth fairy, I know you have older children. Do you have grandchildren? What's the tooth fairy all about? So she sends me the email. I get the email and my mouth, if you could have seen the expression on my face. The day before Sandra, I was going through some old things and I found a little velvet pouch full of all my children's baby teeth. And I sent a text with a picture of their baby teeth to my two daughters. And all I wrote at the top was tooth fairy. And I sent it off to my girls and um, Nadia, when well, my daughter wrote back and put, OMG, please tell me those aren't my real teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so Suzanne was doing a class. I don't know. I can't remember where she was. And I sent her an email that said, Suzanne, I cannot believe this. There's no way you would have known it. And I told her what happened. And I said, I was so joyous when I found this um these teeth because I know I have my son's DNA. And I said, for you to even know I did this. And Suzanne was in a class and she picked up the phone and she called me. And as she was talking to me, 
she said she could see my son in the distance between trees surrounded by two angels. And um, apparently, Eamon's a very good communicator. And um, Suzanne has had him, you know, in drop-ins. And again, Suzanne said, Tracy, spread your story, spread your story, spread your story. Make this a ripple effect. And at the end of the speech that she does when she tells people about, about me, she'll say, I have no doubt someday Tracy will be leading a helping parents group. And now she can say Tracy is a affiliate leader and is helping leading uh, a group of parents. So um, I attribute it to her and Eamon because I couldn't do this without her and I couldn't do it without Eamon. Eamon's sitting right next to me now and he's my guide. He's my inspiration. And you know, Sandra, many parents um, have foundations, and that was my first thought. Um, we had, um, in lieu of flowers, we had um, donations sent to the Reggie White Foundation on sleep apnea, which is a very unknown, very can be a very deadly disease, um, also can affect people's life. But it was so hurtful for me to think of my son struggling that I decided not to define Eamon by his death, but to define him by his life. And to me, that's by trying to help other parents. And that's how I started this journey. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. You feel him by your side. You trust he's by your side. You know he's Absolutely. by your side. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, you and I talked a little bit about intentions. Mm -hmm. It's not only Amen, it's all our children. This group of eight women, we, we fondly call ourselves the um, Soul Sisters Eight. <laughs> <laughs> and we feel each other's children. We get incredible, undeniable signs. You know, when, when, say I'm in the rabbit hole that day, which is a warm, comfy place I go when I want to cut myself off from the rest of the world. And I can reach out to them and I say, you know, I'm having a hard day. And all of a sudden, you know, m my biggest sign is feathers. Um, you know, somebody will find a huge feather on the golf course and send me a picture and mm -hmm. sending you a sign. You know, they'll get the the his birthday, the 19th. But it's not me. It's all of us, all of us get signs from our children. Um, um, if, if you don't mind me t telling you how this ripple effect can no, work. No, not at all. Um, uh, I have, I can call her my friend now, and she said it was okay to share. Her name is Kay. She lives in Australia. She goes to a therapist there, and her therapist said um, – she was going to share, Suzanne did the video about my story um, and some others, and she was going to share it with this lady, but she didn't think she was quite ready. But at the end, they Suzanne talked about Vikings, which her son loved Vikings. So she sends this video off to this lady in Australia. The lady watches it in, I can't remember how many years, maybe four years or two years since her son had transitioned. She never reached out to, to a parent. But my son's story touched her so much. She sent me this email from Australia, said my son Elliot and Eamon had so much in common. I just feel the need to reach out to you. We fast became friends. Um, we had so many things in common about like our children's love for animals and just uh, so many things. She came, I told her the story about my feathers. She came home the next day after talking to me on email. There was a group of feathers by her front door. She said she literally looked around to see if somebody was playing a joke on her, planting those feathers there. But she's in Australia. She's coming to the annual Helping Parents Heal. This ripple effect of our children spreading this news and us spreading the news helped her move on, 
helped me by thinking I helped another parent. Yes. It just is amazing how someone in Australia and someone in Colorado, you know, could connect with each other and we get to meet in person in April. That's beautiful. Isn't it? You just, you never know how your words can make a difference. I know we'll talk about uh, the Facebook group, the online group in a second, but I know even in my Facebook group um, or our Facebook group that we don't die listeners and anybody can join that. Sometimes a parent or a person grieving, they post something and it makes a difference for so many people. You just, you never know. You never know. They, they, they look at those of us again, my journey has only been 22 months. Uh, you know, for me even to believe that I'm here and, and don't get me wrong. I, um, one of my, um, co-leaders, Brian Smith, who's a huge inspiration to me. Every day is an accomplishment that we made it through to us. Yes. It's a journey we wish upon no one. It's a journey you do not understand unless you walk in our shoes, which we don't want anybody to do it, but it, we find so much solace in knowing we have each other and we can say things to each other that only we understand. If we say, you know, I want to leave, I want to go with my son. They don't pick up the phone and call 911 that somebody else might. We understand that feeling, Mm -hmm. but we also think we can help each other to talk through it and to know this is our soul journey to know we have a purpose. If I, if you would have told me, you know, I was a stay at home mom, you know, I was involved in, you know, my children's school. If you would have told me this time in my life, I would be trying to help other grieving parents. I would have thought somebody was nuts. Yeah. I, you know, I had a mother who religiously follows you, Sandra, and just so much believes in you and your, um, you, what you do. And she said to me, please dismel, dispel the myth, you know, that children who commit suicide go to hell. She said, I battle that every day. And I said, of course they don't go to hell. We don't believe there's a hell. Me personally, I believe this life is, is hell. I'm with <laughs> you. you. <laughs> yeah. I Soul believe. sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> I believe this is our hell. I don't believe, you know, I believe in um, all loving God source, Allah, whatever you want to call it, you know, and I said, of course, I will, I will say that, you know, there's, you know, people sometimes feel parents, if you are our friend, or if you talk to us, you know, it's a bad omen, something's going to happen to you. Or they're afraid that you're going to make us cry if you say our children's name. Right. Nothing makes my heart sing more than to hear my son's name. Might it make me cry? Yes, it might make me cry. You know, somebody might tell me a story about my son. It might make me cry, but that's part of my journey. I have to feel it. I have to go through it. It's okay. You know, don't avoid me. Don't go the other way. If, if, if that's what you have to do, it's okay, but I understand. Yeah, it's but fear a lot based, of people I don't. think. Yeah. It, the, it's very fear based. People don't know what to say. It's it and unless you've been someone who's experienced grief, you know, it's it's weird. It's like I hear lots of stories that my friends all disappeared, you know. They didn't know oh, what to say. Absolutely. I have a whole different group of friends. Right. They don't know what to say. They're, they're afraid to say anything, but it's, it's okay because to be quite honest with you, I find more comfort being around like-minded people. Mm -hmm. When we went to the AREI, AREI conference, which is the first time I got to meet you. Yes. That's the symposium that we're talking about, afterlifesymposium.org. I always put in a plug for that (laughs) because I love it. And I'm already signed up for. Cool beans. Um, and I got to meet your, your, your vibrancy and your light, Sandra. You are just a shining light. I mean, you light up a room when you go in there in, in the work you do. And thank you. Um, you're welcome. I mean, I, I truly mean it, but there was a group, I guess, of probably maybe 10, 12, uh, parents that were there that I'm friends with. 
And um, it's the first time that I really got away and were with with my friends like that. And we laughed and we just had such a good time. And Suzanne Giesman came up and she said, everybody wants to know who this happy group is. <laughs> and she said, Suzanne said, you will not believe it, but this is a group of bereaved parents. Right. And just having the camaraderie of other parents and knowing it was okay. Yes, around everybody, we were happy and we were having fun. But at night when we were in the rooms together or if we were sitting outside, you know, the tears flowed, but we understood. And that's also very healing. And for those of you who have not signed up for the AREI Comfort Conference, that's amazing group and such a good resource. And Victor Zamet is just, and Craig Hogan um, and Suzanne Wilson, amazing, amazing, amazing people. And they did such a beautiful job. And it's even bigger this year. It, it is. It's going to hopefully double the size. I felt like I met people that I want to be friends with, best friends for the rest of my life. I mean, and just that's how I, people. that's, I felt about you when you said that you do that trip, uh, that you do at Thanksgiving. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to find a way to do this with her. <laughs> we can make it happen. You bet we can. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Banyan Retreat. Uh, that's right. They have it in the spring and in Thanksgiving, BanyanRetreat.com. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I want to just touch a couple, a few more minutes on a few things that we had just said. Um, We'll just back up a little. You know, if you don't know what to say to someone who's grieving, sometimes it's easier to just say, I don't know what to say, but I love you and I'm here for you, whatever you need, you know? Absolutely. Or honestly, if you visit someone, you don't have to say anything, just I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm what they call a caring listener. I have um, parents that reach out to me by text or by, um, most of the time they don't want to talk. It's easier to text or to IM me. Yes. And I'm a caring listener. And, and what that means to me is to just say, Hey, I'm here. You can, sometimes I'm up at two o'clock in the morning talking to somebody who can't sleep or is having nightmares or, um, is having a panic attack. I'm here. Ask me if you want to ask me or just know I'm here if you want to talk about the weather to distract yourself. We can talk about the weather. I, I read something one time where this gentleman said, I had somebody come over and he sat next to me and all he did was talk and give me advice. I couldn't wait for him to leave. But <laughs> yeah. He, he said the next day I had someone come over and they sat next to me and he put my hand on my leg and he said, I'm here if you want to talk. And we sat in silence for a long time. He said, I didn't want him to leave. Oh. So, you know, and, and that's how, you know, that's how we feel. But the newly bereaved, you know, I think they just need a lot of more um, tenderness with kids' glove, even just introducing what we believe. You know, Sandra, we believe in soul planning. That's a very hard concept. I doubt it a lot of the time. That's a very hard concept to believe that we signed up that our children would go before a parent, it, uh, their parents. It doesn't seem to be the natural order, but it it can be. You know, we were never guaranteed a certain order. Yeah, I do know with soul planning, um, you know, that we planned all this before we came. You know that. What I want to say is the real truth will find out when it's our time to transition, right? Absolutely. But, and and that, we try and hold on to that. Yeah, We're not meant to know everything. No, but there's something that's so comforting in a sense that for a few minutes even to say, well, if this was the plan, I might not understand it. But in, instead of being in the shoes of you know, why did this happen to me? And, you know, our brains can get so on autopilot with feelings of guilt and feelings of, you know, sadness and so many things. But even just to to hold on to that soul plan, well, even just for a few minutes, I know 
being a griever, you know, okay, yes. may, maybe, okay, maybe yes. if this was the plan, am I learning something from this? Am I growing? Maybe they are one of these earth angels that just signed up to be here for 29 years and is going to make you an even bigger impact in the world from the afterlife. You know, you just don't know. But I think what I know about grief is sometimes we have to short circuit these these trains that are going 300 miles an hour of guilt or sadness or whatever to get our, to get some healing. Uh, and that is huge because every parent in some way or the other carries guilt, the what ifs, the should haves. But if we can tune into, well, maybe we really did um, plan this. Maybe I really did agree to this. Maybe there is a reason, you know, my son fulfilled what he came here for. Now it's my journey. I can take the journey. I can curl up in a ball. I can have people say, Tracy was never the same after Eamon transitioned. But do I want that to be Eamon's legacy of destroying his mother? No, I want Eamon's legacy to be, look what, when Eamon transitioned, she turned her life into trying to help others and instead of doing this. And I know that's so hard. I, I know it. I mean, if anybody, I thought I couldn't do this, but I want to say if I can do this, anybody can, anybody can. Yeah. We never know. Um, I, I would have never thought myself. The worst thing that's happened to me thus far in my life is the death of my dad and all the things that happened around it. But it did, it's given me the best thing that I've had in my life, which now is everything I'm up to and this great community and making a difference on the planet with so many lives. So making a difference. And, you know, that is, that is where, and and it's not only in the grieving group, just, embracing love and kindness and the things that really matter in life. Yes. You know, sometimes I was born and raised Catholic. My children went to Catholic school. You know, I had that doctrine, but what I believe is the basis of almost every religion, no matter what religion you are is love. So even if people disagree, if they think the Bible or the Quran or, or something says something different, Let's just agree on love. You know, let's just agree that that's where this earth, we need to heal this, this planet. That's where we need to come from is love. I, I was in a memorial service that they were doing in the Catholic church and the priest stood up and he said, God never promised you, you know, who would go first in this life. We're only guaranteed the here and right now. And that's how we all need to live. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed 10 minutes from now. We aren't. It's easy to think we are, but we aren't. You mentioning love takes me back when you were saying at the beginning uh, that Eamon was with you and you could feel him. And we mentioned briefly intention. Mm -hmm. And I just interviewed a woman, um, my last episode, Helen DeVita, who's one of the top tutors at the Arthur Finley College, which teaches mediumship. And she said something about intention that I'd never heard before. And I just want to tie this in because I think it's good for all of us is, you know, when I would think of intention, it'd be like, okay, I want this to happen, like in the future, or I intend that there's going to be an empty parking space right in front of the store, <laughs> not far away. But right. the way she talks about intention is feeling the feeling as if it's already happened. And exactly. So, yeah. And so when you bring up Eamon being right next to you, and I think, I'm just thinking, you know, I'd I don't often even practice what I preach as far as uh, talking to my dad, even though I know he's right by my side. But it takes, I think, for us to feel our loved one, that they're by our side, and to relive that love that we share. And that is what we call intention. And I think that opens the doorway to so much of the signs, the communication, as opposed to sitting and saying, oh, I hope someday 
this will happen someday. Yeah, I hope like to that. feel their, their presence is that we actually can put in right now and recall that feeling in order to have more things come. So I just thought that was a, a new twist on intention. But Beautifully so, said. Yeah. Dude, that's exactly. And um, David Kessler, when we were talking about, said this, we all have intentions every day in our mind, but they can be negative or positive. Yes. And when you're asking for signs, the way we believe the best thing to do is, and you a beautiful person that I know you know very well is Suzanne uh, Wilson. Yes. She teaches how to do set intentions. But you don't what what we like to do is like when I ask Eamon for a sign, I don't beg, I don't plead, I don't cry. I set the intention to expect. Eamon, I'm getting ready to go on my walk. I would love to receive your sign, you know, I'm expecting it. I can't wait. Nice. You know. Um, so do it in a positive way. You know, before I got on the show with you, I set the intention that not only Eamon was going to be here with me, um, that my friend's children that I feel I get signs and messages from them as well. I haven't had a um, dream visit yet from Eamon. I get lots of signs and he's a great communicator. And I, I want to say this to other parents too, because this is important you will get that sign or that dream visitation when you are ready. I'm not ready. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still what they consider very early on in this grief journey, but I feel, you know, Eamon's dad has gotten them. His sisters have gotten them. His fiance, his old girlfriends have gotten them. His friends have gotten them. I'm still at the point. I feel like if I feel Eamon that close, I may want to go home with him okay. and I won't, but I just feel like he knows I'm not ready. And I feel like when I'm ready, I will get that sign. And I have so many parents that say, you know, wow, you get all these amazing signs. Why don't I get these signs? Grief is very heavy. Our children have a very hard time getting to us when we are in heavy grief. We need to learn to set these intentions, even if, Five minutes a day, you can try and be happy. I know you can't be happy all the time, but it's very hard for our loved ones to come through. And they might come through other people. They may give the message through other people. You've, you've got to try to, you know, uplift yourself. There's, there's lots of things you can do. Um, reading. Suzanne Geisman just wrote, um, still right here about, um, her journey with, um, a group of parents, amazing. Um, we like to call ourselves, um, Chandra, uh, Sandra, uh, a term that Suzanne Giesman has coined us. It, we're called shining light parents. Um, we are shining even after what has happened to us because yes. we know our children are right here. They're right here. They're mm-hmm. always with us. And I think too, you know, growing up, I'd always hear, if you're in a bad mood, put a smile on your face for 30 seconds and you'll feel better. And I think using that as far as uh, grief and wanting uh, some signs and things, act as if they're right by your side and you're talking with them. Yes. And it, it boy, it really sets a whole, I think, chain of events in motion. I, I was reading a post online and um, someone said, um, tell my son when she said a message and I wrote back to her, I said, you did just tell him he heard you. He's right there with yes. you. You know, you don't have to speak it out loud if you, you know, some people are uncomfortable, but they hear what you're saying. They, they know what you're saying. They're here to help us. Um, you know, they're, they're here every step of the way. They know what you're going through. And this is another, um, miss, some people misthink. They know that we're going to grieve them. They know that we cry, but it doesn't hurt them. It They try every way they can help us with signs, with comfort, with feeling them around, with smelling a scent, you know, so many different ways. But we're not going to hurt them by crying. No. You know, I just thought of something. I, and I'm listening to a an audio um, by that Helen DeVita and it's talking about our spirit guides um, and there's an exercise, a guided imagery exercise about 
uh, have, you know, inviting them to step in and then pay attention to our awareness and what it feels like and then ask them to step away and how does it change and why can't we set a time with our loved one who has transitioned that we sit and we close our eyes and we invite them to be close and then what does that feel like and vet, invite them to step away. What does that feel like? You know, to really start building up that feeling of what is it like? You know, what does that feel like? I, I, I read the same thing. Yeah. And, um, uh, and, and, um, uh, D- David Kessler said he does an exercise when a person's in the process of transitioning to go stand to your back to them to try and start building your spiritual muscles of what it's not, what it's going to be like when they're not physically here. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what you're saying um, is, is do that. I sent the, I set the intention before I get out of bed in the morning because my mind races. So I like to in the morning, whether you call it meditation, whether you call it just being um, here and now, um, the biggest thing people have a hard time doing is being present. Our children, our loved ones are sending us signs all the time. We just miss them by not being present. Mm-hmm. Our minds are so busy. So, so busy. busy. Technology, our phones, our computers. I know. But we have to remember we are souls ourselves. We are. We just happen to have we this are. body. Tracy, I'd love yeah. it if you talk about helping parents heal and then I get into love to. Yeah, the different uh affiliates and then the online group. Yeah. Because it's um, great. Back in 2012, uh, Mark Ireland and Elizabeth Boisson um, started a group called Helping Parents Heal. Um, both bereaved parents. Um, Elizabeth has had two children transition. And they started this group and they started um, a local group. Um, Elizabeth is in uh, Arizona the most beautiful, kind, uh, always with a smile on her face, um, person, just, just a dear person. But anyhow, started this group. I joined, uh, probably maybe three months into my journey. And I think around then there was around 4,000 members and I may have this wrong. There was over 10,000 members. Um, there's around 23 in-person groups um, throughout the United States, there's groups in Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom. Sandra, the biggest difference with helping parents heal, it's nonprofit, but we're dedicated to assisting bereaved parents. But the difference is we go a step beyond traditional groups by allowing the open dialogue of spiritual experiences and evidence of the afterlife, which most groups are very um, afraid of, yes. and we try and do this in a very non-dogmatic way. We don't care what religion you are. We don't care what ethnicity you are. We don't care. Um, we just like to let parents know um, their children are still here. Um, it's open to relatives, uh, friends, anybody we think you know, that will will benefit from this. So what happened with me starting a, a group, you know, um, I reached out to my friend, Brian Smith. Um, we have a group, it's um, Helping Parents Heal online group on Facebook. And I reached out to Brian and one of my um, other really good friends, Beth West. And I said, how about if we do an online group and Brian's wife, Ty Smith. So it's myself, Brian Smith, Ty Smith and Elizabeth West. And we started an online group. We started in August. We're up to about 2,400 members. Fantastic. But the beauty of our group and you were one of our, of course, our favorite guests. You did a beautiful presentation, but the beauty of our group is, is, is a few things. Number one, we can connect anywhere over the world via Zoom. Number two, if you don't feel comfortable putting your face up on the screen and participating, don't. You don't have to. Listen. Listen with an open heart. Number three, we have these videos available for people to watch later. 
and they're so healing. And, you know, I've listened to videos over and over and I keep getting more messages and more messages. Sure. Always something new. Always. Uh, always. And, you know, um, we're in the process of, like you and I discussed, of putting it um, on Facebook. YouTube. I mean, to YouTube. Yep. We're, we're a closed group. Um, we don't, we believe it or not, we get people who try and join our group for other reasons. And we want people to come here and feel like they can express their feelings where their coworkers won't hear or, you know, where their children won't hear how they truly feel inside. Um, so that's kind of, um, the beauty of our group. Um, helping parents heal on Facebook and, um, helping parents org. that is, um, developed as a tribute page. Um, people send in their child's, um, birthday and it will be put up online and they also share their child's, I like to call it rebirth day. You can call it rebirth day, transition day, angel day. Um, they share that and your story. And, um, so it's a beautiful tribute to the children and I encourage everybody to sign up for both groups. Um, on our particular group, on the online group, um, we have had guests. We've had James Van, Van Prague. We've had you, Sandra. We've had Suzanne Giesman, Suzanne Wilson, Roberta Grimes, Bill Guggenheim, uh, David Kessler, Melinda Kushner. Um, I'm sure your listeners know of all these people. Sarah Rubel, David Rowder. David does energy healing. Dr. Mark Pitstick, Ernie Jackson, Judith Hancock. It's a mix of not only um, mediums, but it's it also is energy healers, psychologists, grief specialists. Um, we try and provide resources. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the groups out there kind of uh, there's a lot of negativity of posting. We don't mind if somebody post something negative because we want to try and turn it into something positive to help them. We encourage more to be uplifting and supportive. Yeah. Sometimes people just need to say where they're at and it yes. might not be all roses and pretty things, you know, it, it's not, but we also try and be very sensitive to where everyone is in their grief and to never say anything that hurts others and no one intentionally does that no. but sometimes it comes across that way um our upcoming events for people who want to join our group we have thomas john who's the manhattan medium he's amazing we have craig hogan mark ireland troy griffin which um he gives um a sort of um a a Christian side, which we don't promote one way or the other, but you know, that can help a lot of people sure. who have a certain doctrine. Yeah. Um, we have Terry Daniels coming up, Farrah Gibson, Nicole Riley, Sharon Welsh, Tom Zuba, Troy Griffin. Oh, I said him twice. Um, but anyhow, many, many, many resources. They can always go on our page right now and watch our old, um, our previous, um, videos. Um, it's, it's amazing to have that kind of support. I, d I didn't know it was out there and I'm so blessed I found it. Yeah. Now let me just ask you a question. You thankfully have let me become a member be and I'm guessing because I part of the, <laughs> I was yeah. on the show, <laughs> but there's people that are listening right now that have not lost a child mm -hmm. and they might've lost a sibling or a spouse. And I know you're geared for parents but there's no other way to get people to see any of these videos unless they join. Well, here's a few things. Number one, yeah. um, Helping Parents Heal has just started a group called Helping Siblings Heal. Okay. And you can find that on um, our uh, helpingparentsheal.org page. Um, number two, if you are a relative of a child, um, of course, you can join. The only thing we have to be careful of is um, getting off our mission track. We allow um, people who will help 
like how you have helped so many. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm in a group called um, Souls Awakening. They're like another online family to me, beautiful souls who have gone through a process of mediumship. They post to help um, and just encourage people. We, we never advertise, um, you know, we'll advertise like if it's an upcoming, we'll advertise your radio show, you know, that helps. But there's so many foundation that parents have for their children. If we advertise those, we wouldn't have room to help people. And there's so many, we don't want to miss people. Right. I get it. I get right. it. Right. And like so, with my episode, you let me share that. Oh, absolutely. So maybe there's some more that, you know, may not need to be part of the group, but, um, well, the- like this, this recent one that David Kessler did, mm-hmm. um, that sort of had a huge ripple effect. And Suzanne Geisman taught me to share, share and create a ripple effect. I'm sharing that with everyone and we're going to put it on YouTube. We've talked about being private on YouTube, um, but I think some of them can be public, like yours was so helpful and amazing, yes. David's was. We need to work through that process because if somebody asks a question, in our group, we normally field the questions, so you don't really know who the question came from right. unless somebody wants to speak out because we want to protect our parents. So, you know, if, if somebody didn't specifically, you know, come out it, and it's a resource, we're all about spreading the news. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our children are still right here. Yes. And I think, too, Tracy, you, me, Helping Parents Heal, Eternia, Eternia Suzanne, the Suzannes, um, Afterlife Research and Education Institute, the Zamets, we're all arm in arm. Oh, and there's absolutely. so much. So if you're listening, I mean, there's only so much we can digest in any one given day. Uh, but we'll get you the material. And you also have to trust sometimes your fingers and your mind are led to just the thing you need to hear or see. So even if you can't see them, You've got your guides and your loved ones in the afterlife right by your side. And, and synchronicities, yes. like Dr. Gary Schwartz says. Sure. The synchronicities, trust yourself. You know, I'll get a message for one of my friend's children and I'll say, oh, should I really do this? What if it's not true? I trust myself and probably 90% of the time I can validate it, you know, there are no coincidences. It's all about synchronicities. You know, I'll have somebody reach out to me just at a time when I think, oh, I need to hook these two people up because they have so much in common and they can help each other. Yes. I do want to mention um, we are having our first uh, Helping Parents Heal conference April 13th through the 15th, um, same um, venue uh, where AREI is in Scottsdale at the Embassy Suites. Um, we're sold out, which is amazing, but we are taking a waiting list. So I encourage everybody to get on the waiting list because we're trying to figure out a way if we can add more people or how we could do that. Um, we capped it out at 350 people, which is amazing in itself that Irene Vuvalidis is um, the chair and she and her group is doing an amazing job. It's going to be annual, um, hopefully every year, um, and it will just grow bigger and bigger. And people can find out about that by going to helpingparentsheal.org. Yes. And on our Facebook, we, you know, post all the information. We have all the wonderful speakers, Suzanne Geisman, Suzanne Wilson, you know, um, a lot that were at the AREI. Um, uh, so we just have, um, unbelievable people that are presenting, you know, at the show. And there's so many people that can't attend anyways, even if it wasn't sold out because of the distance. I always encourage people to go to the website, look at who some of these speakers are, because we have no idea 
who's doing what in the world of grief, in the world of afterlife communication, in the world of helping us live more powerful, fulfilled lives. And there might be somebody on there that strikes you that you're like, hey, I've never heard of that book. I'd like to find out more about this person or that. Which which is exactly, and and that's what we do. Our site is a little bit different too. Um, we have a page of recommended um, uh, evidential mediums and providers, but there's never a charge to be on it. And uh, Mark Island has a process that he vets them, and um, that's a prerequisite now. Um, you know, some people like the, of course, George Anderson, who's um, our keynote speaker, and James Van Prager, you know, people who, you know, we've heard uh, are, are, you know, famous. Very, um, yes. Yeah, but but we also, we try and be very, very, very careful if we ever recommend anybody but we have a recommended, you know, list of books. And like you said, look at it. Someone may resonate with you that you've never heard of and trust your feeling. Yeah. Read those books. Uh, you know, I, I set aside at least an hour a day to research and study the afterlife. This is what saved me. This yes. is what, what makes me go on knowing that there is more. And someday I will go home and, you know, Eamon's going to be there waiting for me. He will. He'll be right yes. there to greet you. Yes, he will. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> I now, have no uh, well, just one question, because I know there's two different um, on Facebook. There's Helping Parents Heal that mm -hmm. people can type in, and then people can also type in Helping Parents Heal Online Group. Can you just talk about what the difference is? Yes. Our, uh, the Helping Parents Heal Online Group holds meetings via Zoom. We do it uh, twice a month, and sometimes we get more. Um, and then Helping Parents Heal is the tribute page. They also, you know, have open discussions, but unfortunately with 10,000 members every day, there's a lot of tributes that go up. Um, and, and that's our way of honoring all the children and you know, praying for the children and, you know, getting to know each other's children. Yeah. When, when we were at the, um, ARA, ARAI symposium, um, both Suzanne Wilson and Suzanne Giesman said, Oh my goodness, this place is full of children. Your children are here. They're yeah. full of your children. They felt them. They knew they were there. So great. The other thing, um, this is new that we're doing on the online group. And again, we just started in August, but, um, I talked, a, I've been talking with a lot of parents and there's a lot of difficulties in different groups. Right now, the biggest thing we're finding in our group is physical death by suicide. Um, the children did not commit suicide. Their death was by suicide, which we try to be very conscious of our terminology. Yes. We don't believe our child died. We believe they transitioned, changed world, lost their body. Um, the second one are overdoses. There yes. is just an epidemic in this country. Um, so what we're planning now is to sort of have breakout groups of um, um, physical death by suicide, overdose, um, sudden death. Um, death by an illness, um, death if it was your only, or er, uh, transition if it was your only child. Um, so now we're kind of in the process of adding additional meetings where people can join in if that particular subject is very hard. You know, I have one mother who said, please talk about, you know, my child died by suicide. He didn't go to hell. Of course he didn't go to hell. You know, let's let's make this be an open dialogue. There's such a stigma uh, about that. There shouldn't be there. It's no one's business how anyone transition. Nevertheless, making a judgment on someone's child. You know, we want to dispel all these rumors and, yes. and these terrible things that people say and that they don't realize they're hurting the parents. Every one of us will be greeted with open arms, loving arms, 
And no judgment. No judgment. We, Children continue to grow, I believe, in the afterlife. And uh, Sandra, yeah. we only judge ourselves on the other side. No one judges us. We only judge ourselves by what we accomplished here. Mm-hmm. And that is so hard, especially for, again, you know, certain you know, certain way children transition that society feels, you know, they shouldn't talk about. They should talk about it. Honor to your child no matter. It's no one's business. Uh but but their own in in your your families. Yeah. I've never been someone addicted to drugs. Uh food, yes, <laughs> but not <laughs> drugs. But I can only I can't imagine growing up as a young person and the addiction and all that sort of thing, like what havoc that can wreak in your body that would yeah. lead to um, well, and, that, suicide, and, and suicide. If you listen yeah. to any of um, Dr. Mark Pizdik's videos or if you read Soul Proof, a lot of times it's our environment. It's uh, mental health issues. It's uh, uh, which what someone may have eaten or a prescribed drug. You know, it's it's not it's not a lot of it's not what people think it is. Mm-hmm. There's an underlying issue. And then which turns around to parents guilt. I should have done this. I should have done that. But when you truly believe in soul planning, this is the way it's meant to be. And I do also believe, Tracy, that if we could have done something another way, we would have. I believe each one of us human beings, at the time anything comes at us, you know, we make the best decision at the time. Ab- absolutely. Not only do we make the best decision, I truly believe, and, and we like to believe, we all have an exit point. Some people believe we have more than one. Some people like to believe, I t- believe there's really only one or free will does come into play, but I don't think in the larger picture of the exit point. So this was meant to be, our child was meant to exit at that time. And really, no matter what you did, would not have changed that. We think it would. You know, how many times have I heard a parent say, I wouldn't make that soul plan. I would have gone first. Yes, we all think that way. But in reality, somebody, you know, we laugh and we say there must be a pretty good bar up in heaven where we sat on a cloud and made this soul plan because I can't believe I was in the right mind <laughs> to have my <laughs> to have my child go first. And, and, and unless somebody, you know, I had a few drinks in me. Yeah. But even thinking of the most extraordinary people doing great things like Mothers Against Drunk Drivers and all these things. They had to come out of someone's pain in order. Yeah. And so in the moment, you could be listening right now, suffering from huge grief. And the last thing you want to think about, it was a soul plan. And we're not forcing anything on you, but no. And I honestly believe this, that if you allow this, this, what's happening now, the feelings that you're happening, that it can you know, 10 years from now, five years from now, or 22 months from now, you can realize that, ah, I see that happened like that, so that I would be here today learning what I am today. And Tracy, this could be one of those conversations that a parent's listening to that will choose life instead of ending their own life. So you just don't know. And not only that, if you really think about it, Am I going, I have to continue on in my life. I can choose whether I'm going to be miserable. And, you know, in my personal opinion, I will never get over the grief of losing my son ever. But I can, and I I can, and I choose to find a way to live with it. I'm so humbled to be on your show and to think if one parent can take one little thing that I said and bring a smile to their face or, or learn something or help them. I, I feel like I've honored my son and I've honored this journey that I'm on. Yes. No doubt about it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just something, you know, that I have a friend, Sarah Rubel, who she channels her son, Scott, 
And sometimes when I'm having a hard time and I'm saying, what if I would have, you know, what if I had, there's new things that came out, you know, for neurological sleep apnea. What if I had that implant put in Amen? It, it wasn't available then. And she said, it was in your soul plan. It happened exactly, you know, the way it should. And I go back to, oh yeah, you know, that's right. You're right. And, and uh, Brian, I'm going to quote, quote, a Brianism. We need reinforcement. We know it, we believe it, but we need reinforcement. You know, it, it's so good to hear. It's so good. I try and post a positive post every single day on our site or a saying or maybe one of your episodes, Sandra, or something that just will bring somebody up. And it's because we need reinforcement. It's not easy. We it, need reinforcement. It's not easy. And whether it's reading a book, being part of a helping, helping parents heal online group, or we don't die listeners online, or we don't die listeners Facebook group, listening to an episode of this or something else empowering, it reminds us of who we are. It reminds us of the bigger picture and it helps because left to our own devices, being in our own head is not a safe place to be a lot. I don't think so. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely not. And the darkness that can come in and just knowing there are people out there who will, you know, who will, want to help and your children want you better they're always there they're they're still right here yeah you can make a difference and you can make a difference in in somebody else's life just by being compassionate and smiling at somebody and again it doesn't just go with our children it goes to making a better world it sure does well tracy thank you for being our guest today sandra you are a blessing and thank you so so much for having me and sharing Helping Parents Heal and letting me honor my journey with Amen. It's such a blessing. Of course. Of course. Well, big hugs to you, long distance. Uh, Although I know you're right next to me, your spirit is. And for our listener, thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, As a reminder, we've been talking to Tracy Susie. You can go to helpingparentsheal.org. You can go onto Facebook, Helping Parents Heal. You can type that in or Helping Parents Heal online group to be part of the online meetings and so much more. Um, You're not alone. You're not alone. And yeah, as a reminder, there are conferences coming up. You can find out more at helpingparentsheal.org. Uh, That's um, their first annual conference, which is great. And then our conference for anybody at the afterlife symposium.org. You can find out more. That's going to be happening this coming September 14th through 16th in Scottsdale, Arizona. And a few free resources from me. Our home base for this radio show is we don't die radio.com and you can listen to oh i think this is episode 227 maybe wow <laughs> tracy you can listen to a lot of episodes but also on that website you can get a free copy of um what i call how to survive grief it's a 70 minute audio that i recorded after uh, my dad departed this earth and it gives some real healing tools also it says um, join the insiders club and get a free few chapters of my book but here's the truth it's the whole book in pdf we are givers in this group and uh yeah and that's it so in closing my name is sandra champlain and i've always delighted to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. And I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. And in the words that Tracy said during the episode, just hang in there. You know, there's signs to come. There's healing to come. There is possibly the best adventure of your life and maybe even the purpose for your life yet to come. And it may spring out of a sadness or, um, you know, tragedy, but you just never know. You just never know. So hang in there. So I really want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon.